Welcome back to the channel. Tonight was the monthly meeting for the Queensland Division of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association for the month of April. It's time well spent if you're interested in looking at uh, stuff to do with electric vehicles and learning more about them. And if you're interested in coming along, it's held at the, on the third Wednesday night of each month at the Albion Peace Centre which is on 102 McDonnell Road at Windsor. Uh, let's get into the meeting and I hope to see you there. Batteries, motors, controls, it's all in one piece. Yeah, so, uh, 
And then, it, and really, it is rocket science. That's pretty good. Stuff. That's very well done. So, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, my name is Carl. I um, my first time here as well, and I'm interested in the bike, this bike here, and but also the change in urban mobility and where it's all, how it's going to happen, how it's going to change the face of motoring and people getting around generally. Um, I have a presentation here, let me just see if I can see that one really. So, <laughs> so this is born out of the idea of we see so many of these things and I'm thinking I wouldn't want to be seen on that. I don't know who, who would want to be seen and it's so dangerous. Look at all the belts and everything all around us, how that, that's allowed. Um, but to people making these things, you see them on the street and they're not usually pedaling, so they want to be getting around in a motorized way, but they're just kind of using what they can available at the time. Is uh, okay. okay, there's another one. A bit better. But still, the, the, the crazy guy in England, you see it done to even better. <laughs> <laughs> that goes all right, actually. But I think it's a big guess than today, but you know, that's... <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I, um, this is what I came up with here. And uh, my idea was, you want to be able to get on in your vehicle, whatever it is, you know, you have to be, when you open the garage in the morning, you want to be excited to get on it. And you know that, you know, it has to be easy and pleasant and comfortable. And a lot of um, emphasis was placed on the ergonomics of this bike, uh, whereby you have to sit comfortably and feel secure. A lot of people don't like a very aggressive stance of uh, bicycles and most like racing most bikes, where you, you, your hands are much lower than, than your seat. And it puts a lot of people off the whole um, bike, biking aspect. So I want to get away from that. Um, so that's, that's comfortable, it's very, very, very um, stable, and you sit comfortably on it. And uh, you probably wouldn't mind to be seen on it either. Notice it doesn't have pedals, this, because I've, I've, uh, I've realised there's a centre uh, whereby a lot of people would like to get to work without having to own a car or drive any car, uh, but they, they don't want to get to work sweating, have to have a shower, so, but they don't want to own a, like, a big aggressive motorbike either, so that's how this you know, it fits into that niche of that. So this is, um, as you can see, it has a very, very low seat. Um, now this bike here, it was, it was built. There's only one of them. It was built as a to comply with the uh, the laws of a moped in Australia, whereby you can only go 50 kilometres per hour, and it does that, and it will do that for 60 kilometres. So you can get. To, 95% of people will get to work back in that day and not, um, often people, when they get to work, even if they like, live, live 50 kilometers away, they can probably work out, they can charge it at work, it takes about five hours to charge it and get home, still satisfy those people. Um, however, I consider that um, those rules are probably a little bit outdated with the amount of congestion on the road at the moment. Um, if you go 50 k's per hour, you're just going to be annoying the motorists in the cars. They're going to be probably driving on the side of the road. So I've designed another bike, uh, I'm busy designing, I haven't made it yet, and it will do about um, 80 or 90 k's per hour. So you'll at least keep up with the traffic flow, which is a big safety factor. So this one, it may happen in the future, but it's probably a smaller market for these ones. Um, one of the, one of the uh, big driving factors of the design of this bike was it doesn't have a chain or a belt and it, or a gearbox and it requires no maintenance which is a big, like a bug bed for most people if they have to pay for that to be done or what people don't want to do it themselves. 
and so there's no need for this. It's just, you just get on the gearbox and off you go, it's so easy. It would have to be registered, yeah. Very hard to Big button? It would be very difficult to get it past. Well, this one would be because it is a lot of um, revolutionary parts, like on this wheel and all that, and they, tend, they test it to the end degree. So I've decided, well, um, since I want more speed, I'm going to go with more. Uh, in my first vehicle that I'd go into production with, hopefully, would be um, using a lot more readily available, already combined parts. So it will have conventional wheels and it will have conventional, uh, well, commercially available suspension as well. So the one, you know, it won't have to be such an arduous process to compliance it. Yeah, that's a big consideration for this one. So, those are the figures I'm aiming, I was aiming at for, uh, even, even my new, new bike will aim, probably aim, aim at like $9,000. And um, once you are in production, the cost will come down even more. So, I took it to South Bank, and even though it's not registered, you're not supposed to drive around, it attracts a lot of attention. Everyone, uh, I gave a few people a ride, and everyone just loves it. Can't stop talking about it. And that's just more around, around town. And the thing is, at the end of the day, it's not too difficult. It's just, you know, if you have a bit of passion and uh, a bit of knowledge of manufacturing, it's just engine, couple of wheels and putting it all together. And there's no reason we can't be done in Australia. We should be doing it ourselves. We should have been doing it a long time ago. Anyway. <coughs> Okay, even though it's not so revolutionary, that's the one I'm busy designing at the moment. And um, that's also receiving a lot of revisions as we go along. But that's more like um, what will be made. And that's also, um, that's using motorbike tyres because if you're doing 80 k an hour, you don't want to be probably on these things either. And you want a bit of durability that people ride right in this, they just want to be like, um, ease of use to general computers, so they're one punches. So I want more robust tire. And that's a, that's a uh, almost double the size capacity of this, this battery as it is. That's not one of mine. But that's, that's an inspiration for me. I want to be working more towards something like that. And that's typical of the, um, of the style of bikes, how bikes are, um, are changing. Is, um, even though it looks very good, it's not massively, massively powerful, that bike. There's this, this little lead and there's a, there's a sector that wants bikes to get around in a, in a fun way, but they don't need to be doing like 200 km per hour or or such things. Um, so I'll be taking more inspiration from that as well as we go along. Doesn't know. Oh, hot motor. Um, no, it hasn't. It got a um, mid motor. There's your motor there. Here's your motor. There's your battery pack up here. And that's that, that's conventional chain as well. They got. They have that to draw the chain in, but it will be chain drive. Yeah. yeah this, this is spotted, but there's no chain. You could do that with hub motor. You could do with hub motor. Yeah, that's that's another way to do it. However, um, the Chinese are really making all the hub motors, and I uh, have been talking to them. And to get to get a matching front wheel, they only make back wheels. So your your front wheel looks different kind of thing completely to your front to your back wheel. So because there's there's the hub and then there's the the array of spokes, or however what the style that might be, but you can't get a matching front one. So, <laughs> so I'd rather go spokes actually. But then, I mean, 
they can still go on and they, they have a big pot of money so they can, they can mold their own wheels. But that's what you need to do. Or else just have dedicated motorbike wheels and you can get a, mass, a matching pair yeah, if you go chain drive. As you say, hot motors are quite clean and efficient as well. Yeah, it's a good option. Are you doing your own BMS and BMS. Uh, well, my factory uh, has a, B, a BMS in it, but you know that kind of stuff also comes. From, you, you can, it comes from China. So you just off the shelf BMS. Well, it's, it was specially built for me that in China, but it's. Um, I do find that that BMS strengthens the output more than I would prefer. Uh, so in the future, I probably make my own one. Yeah. Can you drive controls? The throttle controls, the motor and all that. Is that your own or is it just off the shelf? That's it's off the shelf. It's Kelly's stuff off the shelf, yeah. Oh, it's a film. It's a Chinese. Yeah. But it's it's one of the better ones, Kelly. It's very um Um, and 
it would be too much for you, Jane. So some of the some of the guards, um, the developers have decided they do without me, Jane, because it doesn't really help that much with mileage in any case. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. 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 Well, because it's way like the amount of drama. Yeah. So with the rear brakes, do they operate the gen first or they go straight to brakes? I well, if you're cruising it downhill, it will go to B gen, correct? Yeah. So they, they, it has a like a mountain bike brake at the back, but it's it's not it's, it's not fantastic. Yeah, in fact, it's just for a new requirement. No, with this one, the um, the ESC, um, it was that that function was disabled. Uh, it was available in the previous versions, but they disabled that. So you basically pull your brake to a certain degree, and no, it's not it's not with this one. It's a default setting. Point four or something. Yeah. 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 The mobility sector is going to be changing. People are going to have, um, if they want to get go to town or something with their mates, they'll just get Uber or something like that. They won't even own cars, and but they still want their freedom, which a lot of um, the authorities aren't really allowed for the fact that people still want to be able to go their own way. If you, if you get in a, a like autonomous car and take you from A to B, and what if you get in a car and previous people have just trashed it, you know, you're not going to continually want to be there, are you? So this will give you the freedom to do what you want.
So what I end up doing is I end up build, measuring the best I can and build the, the you know the, the, the hardware and I will put it on and then see what hits and then adjust the model from that. So that's pretty much the first goal that I've had and I've had to cut up a few pieces to make the fit. Um, now the um, other thing that I was having trouble was how to hold the uh, motors to the chassis so I figured that maybe a good, a good solution was to actually make the whole thing one piece. So the motors are actually attached to the, to the battery box. Um, and uh, the bits that hold the, the motors also hold the, the battery. Now, the case is mostly just kind of a bag to stop the rubbish from getting into the, into the battery. It's because the battery structure is strong enough to hold itself. And in actual fact, uh, some of the stress goes through the through the battery modules for the for the torque on the motors. So, from a, a, a retrofit point of view, it's actually very simple because it's just one piece that goes in, and it goes on to the original mounting holes that used to have that, that are on the on the car. On the frame, there are some holes that are, I'm not exactly sure what they were for. So it might be for different uh, options that you can get on the car. So I can put bolts uh, through those holes and then just bolt it on. So there's very little that you need to modify for the chassis. Um, so, yep. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, uh, it's a piece of uh, Four-wheel drive. So there's a motor for the front and a motor for the back. So there's two motors, one driving each uh, each seat. Yeah. Sorry. With yeah, no, um, because there's two motors, so you should, sorry, you should man, yeah. Um, so what I might do at some point is uh, maybe change the, 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 the amount of torque that goes out to the front or the back wheel. Um, I don't really know exactly what's the best option, but I'm assuming that we go, when you're going straight, you probably want more, more of the power to go to the back wheels. When you're going around the corner, you probably want more of the front, but um, I really haven't got any, any ideas yet. I have to wait until I put it in the CR2. Hopefully soon. Um, the battery is taking a bit of time because um, I can't make the parts myself. I've got to get in place, I can't, and I've got to send it to somebody else to fall. So that takes, um, you know, it takes me uh, about two weeks just to get one, one step done. Now, when I did this, I didn't actually do everything in one go. I basically made the bottom and the sides first to see whether it was actually going to fit. Uh, so that I didn't have to make the whole log and then find out that I have to remake everything. So I had to cut some pieces for the, from the sides. Then I made the top, which I thought was going to be pretty close. But when I went to put it in, I found that there were other bits that were quite right. Um, then, so that was on, on 1.2 millimeter material. And then the last knot is the brackets that hold the motors, which is on 2.5 millimeter material. Uh, so I think I've more or less got um, at least the box now fits in the car, and the bits I hit, I know where they are and I can modify them. What I'm going to do next is uh, try to figure out how I'm going to put the batteries inside. Um, not in terms of fitting, but mostly in terms of how to make sure that I can assemble everything and that everything is going to go in, in the right place. One of the main issues is that there's very little clearance between the batteries and, and the case. I think there is about 12 millimeter clearance, so you can only move the battery left and right about 12 millimeters. So obviously when I put the batteries in, I need to make sure that everything is up in the right place from the start, otherwise I won't be able to put the box in. And um, I also made the box sort of upside down, mostly because of thinking how to assemble it. Um, it's going to be very difficult to assemble it if it's already got the size because uh, basically uh, I need to put the, 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 you know, the connection between all the different modules. So it's a bit dangerous to have to get in inside the box with, uh, with uh, uh, trying to connect on the bus bar. So what I decided to do was that the bottom part is going to be a flat sheet and then all the batteries go on to the bottom. Everything is assembled with all the bus bars and everything. And then I have to get the top to fit over the top. So obviously, I need to be able to, to position the, all the modules very accurately so that when I put the top, it all fits. Um, now, the, the input and the output goes uh, through, the, through, the top, through the top half of the, of the bed box. 
So obviously everything needs to be fairly accurate when I assemble it. And I haven't quite thought about how I'm going to do that, but I, I don't think it's going to be a... I think it's, it's doable. I might have to make a few jigs or something to, to learn everything else. Yeah? Um, what have you done with the original uh, engine bike? Uh, it's going to be empty. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to be pretty much, yeah, uh, the only thing that is going to be in the front is basically the air conditioning compressor, the hydraulic pump for the power steering, and that's about it. The, the car originally had an electric uh, electric brakes, so it doesn't need a, a, a vacuum pump. Um, you know, one of the things that I was considering was to use the air conditioner to chill water, which I then I was going to use that to either run the air conditioning in the cabin or to also put the batteries in the motor. So uh, one idea was probably to put a, like a fridge in the front. If I'm going to have the cold water already, then I can just uh, you know put it into a, like a little fridge. So you know when you go to the shop, you can put the ice cream there and leave it in. It's not going to melt. So other than that, I can't think of anything. I could put more batteries if I wanted to get more range, but um, it's probably going to end up getting a bit too heavy if I do that. So most likely it's going to bring in the front. Yep. How's the, the weight compared with the other original? Um, the box with the batteries in the motors is about 500 kilos. Um, but I don't know how much the original uh, engine plus transfer case plus petrol tank plus all of that weight. My guess is that it's probably going to be about the same way. You know, the, the, the engine is a V6 uh, cast iron block, so I'm sure that's going to be you know, more than 200 kilos. The petrol tank plus the fuel is probably about another 100. And I'm not sure how much the transfer case gearbox plus drive shaft and the exhaust pipe and all that weighs, but my, I'm hoping that it's going to be about the same as 500 kilos. So if I do that, then it's going to be about the same way. Uh, yeah, that too. Is this going to see any off-road action? Uh, probably. Uh, I mean, the beach? Sorry? On the beach? Uh, yeah, you should be able to go on the, on the beach. Um, the battery obviously is going to have to be sealed. Um, so part of the reason is made out of, uh, you know, the way it is, is so that it's all uh, watertight. Um, so once it's assembled, it's going to be, it's not going to, you don't want to disassemble it, basically. Uh, so it should be watertight, so I should be able to do creek crossings and you know all that sort of stuff. I'm not very sure how well it will work on you know trying to creep up uh, rock faces and that sort of stuff. Uh, in terms of capacity, it has got about 30 percent more pushing power than what it will, than what the car has now in first gear. So if you put the car in first gear and you rev it until you get thick torque on the motor then if you are 30% more on top of that, that's how much pulling power you have with both motors. Except obviously it will do that up to about 120 kilometers an hour. So <laughs> I'm not sure how that would work in, um, you know, like a, in an off-road situation where you want to use low range. In the Dakar? Sorry? You seeing how to go in the Dakar though? Uh, I don't think it would have a range. <laughs> What yep. sort of range and uh, how many batteries you have? Okay, it's 70 kilowatt hour batteries, but I have no idea how much power it needs to keep the car moving, so I don't really know what the range is going to be. I'm hoping that I'm going to get at least 200 kilometers. Yeah. But like I said, I have no idea how much, how much power it, is, it takes to keep it running, so I have no idea. It would be a, I'll need to try it. It's, so I uh, basically put as, much, as many batteries as I could get into the, into the bottom without having to have two separate packs. So the whole idea was just the battery was only one box instead of having batteries everywhere. Any more questions? Yes? Sorry? Uh, well, I haven't actually worked that out yet. Uh, a lot of the stuff I've done myself. So, but the most expensive is the batteries. I think the motors are about fifteen hundred dollars each for each motor, you know, plus the price. Uh, the gearboxes, I got, um, I got them for about two hundred dollars each. That was uh, from the wreckers for uh, for the um, for a transfer uh, for a um, the, the what is it the you know the low range. Um, the inverter, the transistor, the 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 capacitor is about $150. Um, 
the IGBT packs are about 100, 120 rows each, and it's got two packs on each in there. You know, I'm using uh, an, an obsolete part because they are a lot cheaper. And the original, the, the, the newer version of the part is actually got pins so that you can run the, the water through the, through, through the back of the transistor pack. So that basically makes it a lot more efficient in terms of heat transfer. Um, but they are about $750 for, for the six pack, whereas those ones were about $120 for a six pack. Um, now I'm putting two of them uh, to run them in parallel, and I'm going to split the windings so that uh, they share current evenly, so that I don't have to put in sharing resistors. So I should be able to get twice the capacity of the of the packs. You know, the packs are uh, 400 amps continuous, so one pack will most likely be able to run the motor. Now, the reason I put the two packs is because originally I was going to rewind the motor to run it at a lower voltage so that I could get more RPM so that I could get more power. But one of the main issues was that I couldn't actually get suitable data sheets from the manufacturer, so I had to basically assume what was going to happen. I got the motors in from the data sheets that they have, from the information that they had, it appeared like the voltage was wrong. Now, once I got the motor, then I basically uh, I spin, I spun the motor, I measured the speed in the back EMF, and then I worked out that I didn't actually need to rewind the motor. So there's a very good chance that um, I won't need the, the two packs. Uh, but the design is already made with, uh, with two packs. So I should be able to run, you know, 800 amps continuously through the inverter, uh, which the, the, the motor doesn't need that much. It's, I think it's, the peak is about 350 amps. <laughs> oh, the price. Well, um, okay, so I think, look, I think the, each motor is probably going to be about $4,000, including the, the, the inverter. I still have to figure out how much it's going to cost me to make all the, all the cases and boxes and bits and pieces. Uh, for example, the, uh, the gears, I have to modify the, 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 the sun gear, I have to insert a, 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 a plug and then uh, weld it and then re and then have the spline to fit into the shaft. Uh, so uh, I think it cost me about $150 to get the, the splines cut on the inside because I, I couldn't make the splines. Now eventually I worked out how to make the splines at least for the external ones, I can make the external splines on the on the lay. Um, now the uh, the cases I think are about 150 dollars for all the aluminium bits. Um, so the battery, the box probably costs is going to end up costing me about 600 dollars to make the, the final version, and then the cells they're about uh, 250 dollars per kilowatt hour. So. So the batteries are actually the most expensive. Yeah. 
uh, if you took it out to a full dog competition, there's a few around Brisbane every year. I think you'd scare a lot of the guys with the VOs. And you'd scare them because you've got constant traction, you've got massive torque. The reason they four drive race car guys like diesels is because it's the torque. And that's got way more than I'll ever have. No, no deal. But it'd be interesting just to get it off road and the track and put up against the proper race car and get beat up. Yeah, I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know whether you get enough range on this road because the race is not very long. They're not very really long. They're not that. Yeah. No, no, not like that. They'd be, you might do maybe 10 k's in a weekend race. Yeah. yeah. So, well, the other thing that I found Yeah. 